Would you like to see how we put up the GGBY net here on 2019 GGBY? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and we are installing the net for GGBY in the place it's supposed to be for GGBY. And we're not having anybody fly through it or jump off of it or anything. So we have to do things a little bit different, starting with weaving all of the gaps in between all the segments before we set it out there, because it's going to be pretty hard to tighten them up after it's tight and when it's really high up um, and it's not in the park like it was when we did our tests. Hopefully it'll work. A lot of it's in theory and we'll show you the pros and cons of what we're doing since we're all just learning as we go here. All right, so we're trying to keep the shape that they were in as we weaved them. We're gonna obviously leave some curve and not just come, uh, put them span set to span set. So shape is, um, is just guesswork. So what, what was your idea and why are we girth hitching right now? So to weave these sections, we wanna pull them together. And originally we were thinking of just taking the, the points back and forth kind of like this. The only downside to that is if I were to step on one of these points between the sides of the net and not the other, it would cause sort of a, a rubbing motion on the net. And with a lot of tension and a lot of time, like over time we might damage these purple span sets and damage this orange rope where that, that rubbing would have been occurring. So instead we're gonna do some guesstimation and we're gonna put a girth hitch, which fixes each one of these lengths. And uh, so we start with a constrictor. We start with some sort of constrictor here so that as it pulls, it's not gonna loosen. And then to change directions, we use a girth hitch. And then hopefully we can guesstimate these lengths pretty good that when we fill this in with paracord, it'll all be one tension across the surface. So if we do have a loose-ish leg and this one's tight, right. we can just cinch it up with paracord like right. we've been doing with so all of our weaving. So like all of these, like when we weave, eventually they're gonna get kind of different angles in them. It's all gonna kind of suck together the more material we put in that gap. Cool. Well, hopefully it works. So right now we're tagging the uh, wet beaver with some ropes that will make stationary as our shower curtain, which will hold up the majority of the net weight while we're pulling it over. He's installing a via ferrata right here, so we can stay on that ledge safely um, when we go back and forth, because we are going to attach Dan's net off of those bolts right there onto the edge of this net. And we will technically have a five point net, but we're gonna do a lot of stuff with this. But the core of the net, of course, is only four legs. The real trick here is the fact that that anchor over there is about six meters higher, and that's a, um, kind of a trick. Um, if that leg is a little bit looser, this will sit mostly flat as those bolts are only about two meters higher than where I'm standing. Well, or are these bolts on this side? The problem is the bolts right there are lower than me. So nothing is really level here. We kind of just use what we had to, to work with. Okay, we just got a large team to help us carry this big burrito over here. And what we did is make it an accordion and not coil it so that this edge here is uh, goes all the way, we followed it along to make sure that it's not twisted at all. What we have is a hard shackle, a short soft shackle, and a long soft shackle are gonna hold our three sewing loops that are gonna be on these. And um, these are all gonna be pulled favorably. A carabiner is not ideal for this because it could kind of get tri-loaded, even though these points are pretty narrow. Anyways, we're gonna attach this to the leg that goes up there. We're gonna attach this to this corner over here and we're gonna start pulling. Now, when I realized we're gonna do the shower curtain method, we're gonna make this rope tight AF and uh, you can only do that on one side of the space net, I think. That's all we need. We just need the majority of the weight to be held up by one side. Once we get it kind of where we want, then we can detension this, pull it through, drop the whole thing, pull it through the net, and just tension each leg independently. So um, we don't have all the anchor materials yet, but we don't need them. We actually do not want the hang frame right here because it would potentially get things caught. Once we build a temporary anchor off of this one single bolt and make our master point about right here padded, 
and kind of get the net kind of where we want. Then we can put our hang frames here, our, our um, official anchors, and then um, literally lift it up, maybe with a line grip or just by hand, lift it up and clip it to our master point, which will be up here. Those two sides do not get hang frames naturally because they are already higher than we are right now. Um, and our other anchor, which is a trick, is going to be over there where those people are. So um, we'll have to figure out the best way to do this. Stay tuned. Okay, so they're ready to cast the net for some slackline fish. You can see here that we got all our legs across. We're in web locks on this side, just to progress capture. We're not building anchors until we have the net strung out there. Let this shit show begin. Yeah, yeah, you can unclip that one because the back end is clipped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we spelled it backwards. Oh, shit. <laughs> YBGG. <laughs> GGBY! Ow! That's what you call planning because if we didn't have these legs up already, <laughs> this, this would suck. It would suck almost as much as the abrasion on these legs right now is sucking. Okay, so our four anchors are pretty much built. All little adjustments are common. So Michael and Brent are right there. They're tensioning up, putting about a kilonewton on that leg. There'll be about a kilonewton on each leg. We just pulled the shower curtain rope through. We just, I released it from this side and Christopher is pulling it through there. So now we just have to micro tension each side until it's the shape we want because the angles we create really determine if we're going to get this all tight like we want. I mean, that's already looking so much better. So this hang frame was over right here just a moment ago, but it was going over and then that way. So um, this is still adjustable because it's only a kilonewton. But you can see here now, we're still seeing all the, there's tension on each leg, but it's definitely more focused, uh, more of the force will be on this leg, right? So we might have to retie that, which is very, uh, very difficult. We just have to transfer tension from maybe that bolt to the rings with something else, retie the BFK. That's why we don't want more than a kilonewton on anything. Oh my God, that looks so good. I, I think that's great, you guys. Here we go. This needs to be upside down because this and this are going to be um, uh, both tight. So we want those not to be rubbing on each other. This doesn't matter. This is directly in here, allowing this to be backing up soft releases, dynos, whatever we have here. Um, so the third leg doesn't add too much complexity. It's just the fact that we're tensioning both these so much and adding things like this into the system. Yeah, I'm at one right now. This is perfect. Yeah, that's really nice looking. Looks like I'm getting a rope sent down to me from, ooh, yeah, 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 fuck yeah. <laughs> Sick. All right, so that rope is gonna be our runner rope. So it's gonna go one rope around here, and then these ropes are just a few feet above me I can just easily grab them and put them on the inside four corners. Um, we cannot get it directly in the center because we can only go so far out on this side. When I'm out here um, and we're gonna decorate it while we wait for approval, right now there's only one kilonewton on everything and we don't wanna cinch it down until every anchor is really, really good because it just gets really, really hard later if we um, have to deal with like five or six kilonewtons because I do think we're gonna have to redo that anchor. But it's flattish. I kind of like the angles. It's pretty good considering the square doesn't have like uh, equal angles on all corners. Um, but tomorrow we're going to just paracord the crap out of these gaps. And that should cinch them down really well. We're debating whether or not to stick the center am steel in the hole. Which would allow everything to get sucked up together. Because um, if it's tight enough, it would be fine. And it would make it more difficult to rig the slack line if we have uh, a, a circle there. That is sick. Two rigging plates right there. 
All right, so the sun's going down on us. We got our rigging plate still right there, but it's not worth installing the ropes until it's more where it needs to be. We'll be working on that anchor tonight. We got to add a bolt. Added the Lyra, added the silks, added the runner. This 160 meter rope was able to do all the way around. Um, that way you just clip into that and you don't have to keep moving your personal anchors. Uh, the slack line is almost rigged. That's slack line right here. So what I have here is the red shackle is in everything. And, uh, and then the white shackle is just in that corner there. Um, and the, it's fine that it's like orientated sideways. Anyways, he's gonna find flat. He's gonna install a web block over there. We'll put on the leash tomorrow. Um, this is just needs to be tightened up. Little details. And we're done. This is looking really beautiful. Looky how the net is coming together. These gaps here are getting filled in. Our jelly up there is getting saggy on the blue ropes often. It's kind of hard to maintain that. Um, but it's not super critical. Dan's net over here is helping make the entire thing flat, and including the tension here. Second episode appearance ever. And, and Kenny's making a cameo. So uh, let's see. Uh, I'm tied in right now to a super safe enough high line. I believe this is Jerry's original slack line. Isn't that vintage as fuck? All right, looks like uh, Dan's net's held up by two legs of feather. Over there to the sewing loops. Looks like that shackle needs some work, but yeah, it's always nice to have the sewing loops on the space net so you can work on the clip side of things when you're tensioning and adjusting. Jesus. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's... Hold on, hold on. What was the pee? Don't move, don't move. <laughs> chill, chill. We're testing. Oh shit, what? There's a drone behind you. You got it, you got it. What? You got it. There we go. Walk offs are narc. I did a free solo once with a walk off, and it was like, I jumped backwards, it's scary. Alright. What's the piece right now, or what's the force? 5.8. You got it. Cool. Woo! Ow! What's it say? 6.6. .6. Yeah, buddy. We got about a killy Newton with me whipping. It's not too bad. Kill a whipper. So how many can we have whip at once? Three, maybe? Well, it depends how many whip it can uh, canisters you have. Uh, <laughs> Bigger dozen. So, ten. So, ten easy, yeah. <laughs> so that was science. Uh, takes a lot of work to prepare for that science experiment. We're all done here. We can take the net down. Um, thank you, everybody, for your help. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six people was 5.8 kilonewtons. Then I whipped at 6.6. 6. Um, we might be able to have more than. Ten uh, eight people out here. That'd be cool. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. All right, so that dynamometer says four kilonewtons. The line scale two from Line Grip is four point two kilonewtons right here, and we have our soft release on that side of it. And so when we soft release it, the dyno doesn't go with it. Clearly it snowed last night. Um, that dyno over there also says about four or five and then our jelly line is about three-ish right now because it's not holding up that much. A lot of the ropes are saggy, but we're also not seeing a lot of force, so it's not that important. But right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people on the line, on the net. And we're uh, under five kilonewtons on any anchor right now. So this year it's been pretty good about forces. Um, I don't know if it's the square, or the fact it's not tight, or the fact the jelly helps, I have no idea. But this year it's, uh, it's pretty good. Could be very dangerous having this many people in one part of your net. Therefore, you shouldn't space net. So cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> so <funny. laughs>